is taken and they call in that 97th combat team in that pocket and we ought to go in if I can clean out that pocket. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got the SS troopers. Yeah, you know, we got all the elite. <laughs> and uh, that's basically that's what we were, uh, the combat team. Uh, we're what known as pocket pickers. <laughs> so uh, let's just go back a little. Were you were you drafted or did you enlist? I was drafted. You were drafted. First yeah. time. How did you feel when you were drafted? Were you, were you shy? Were you I had to be done. Yeah. yeah. See, I graduated. I graduated in January of school, and in March I was in basic training already. We had a standard joke: if you had a trick of finger and you were warm, you were in. <laughs> So then, when you were at boot camp, was it was it rushed? Like, was it regular boot camp? Was it, uh, yeah, we training? called it basic training. Yeah, basic training. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, uh, it was. Uh, you've probably seen it more or less on TV, which which is overdone a little bit to make it more exciting. <laughs> Another two or three years. Can you feel pre prepared yeah. after boot camp or basic training? Do you feel prepared to go in combat after? Yeah, you, uh, they prepare you to go uh, to a regular outfit. That's what it is. And, uh, I was in Camp Landing, Florida. Over the infantry basic training. Uh, so when you got out of boot camp or basic training, what was your assignment right away? Did you were you already into the well, 97th? I was assigned to uh, 97th Infantry Division. Right away. Camp San Luis Obispo, California. And how long after basic training did you take off to Europe? Well, the strange thing that happened to us. In San Luis Obispo, we were trained for the Pacific. You know, amphibious landing and that. Well, it's up the Battle of the Bulge come along, D-Day, and they needed outfits and they changed everything across the country and put us on a boat for Europe. We landed in La Haye, France. So you were, one year ago you were in high school and then the next year you are in Europe playing Well, it was only a matter of time. Three months. Yeah. Now we're in combat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were some fears you had? Pardon? What were some fears you had going into it? Probably scared. <laughs> That's uh, if you weren't scared, you weren't human. Um, did you learn to use any like? Special weapons where you one of the learned all qualified guys. basic training you learned all uh, uh, all the basic weapons. Yeah. Uh, I ended up being in uh, <coughs> mortar squad. You know, that's one of the uh, with the bipods with the tube and all that. Oh, yeah. yeah, sixty millimeter mortar. Well, I was the first gunner to start out with. So, um, when you saw a lot of combat, uh, could you could you explain some of the more perfect things that you've seen? Would you be comfortable with that? <laughs> well, first thing is the picture object is uh, that you're assigned to take, and then the second thing on the agenda is. Uh, personal safety, which is only the natural instinct of a human being. And uh, you got to have it. It's so hard to explain. Yeah. You know, it's that, uh, it's a human instinct of oh, yeah. self preservation. Uh, they say in, uh, in combat, See the first the first ten minutes. That's when you're most 
casualties occur. Because the uh, life expectancy of an infantryman the first day was 20 minutes. Um, and we, uh, for some reason, we always got the beauties. <laughs> we always got the, the elite, like they're stormtroopers, SS troopers. Uh, the paratroopers, all their elite troops. And, uh, that uh, Germany had. So, so like I was saying, you were you were in high school one one month, and then a couple months later, you were more. Uh, did you have any relationships, like in uh, in high school, and like, you have a girlfriend or anything? And then you had a oh yeah. And then you had, so that was pretty tough for him. Yeah, we were trying. See, I went going to a small school. Clearly, see. Over at Akron, over there, you probably heard of Akron. Yeah. And, and, uh, in my class, there was 47 girls and 13 boys. <laughs> 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 that was what, because of the war. So, what do you think the hardest thing was when you had to leave? What was the hardest thing to leave? And what did you miss the most when you were at work? Oh, uh, what I miss the most is, I think of sports, <laughs> because I had four letters. Oh, yeah. Sports, baseball, football, basketball, track. Pretty athletic. When you eventually got got into the service and you were actually in war, did you, were you glad that you were there in a way? Or did you feel proud? You're never glad for when they're fighting yeah, the, for your life. It's just, uh, in a way, in a way, you know, you know, yeah. you know, you had a, a job that didn't, yeah. you want to be, you want, you know, you want to be better than the guy across from you. Yeah. Did you, um, did you feel that the government provided for you and stood by you while you were there? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, all the major things that actually were mandated, we got. Uh, but a lot of the things, you got to remember, uh, infantry wasn't one of the favorite things or high-profile outfits in the Army. Did you get to choose to go in? Excuse me, I have a little trouble here. Did you get to, when when you got put in infantry, did you have any choice in choosing infantry or aviation? Or uh, no, not really. You just got put Because there. when I got drafted, wherever they needed yeah. bodies. Yeah. First, so that's you where. Got, you got drafted, number one, and then you got drafted into the worst thing possible. If <laughs> 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 nothing, uh, you gotta, you gotta remember, infantry has a lot of pride. Yeah. Uh, That's what I was trying to get. Because we're the ones that go face to face, person to person. Exactly. Yeah. So then you had to feel pretty proud of yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you when you got back from uh, when you got when you came back to Europe, was was everybody proud of you? Did you feel like a hero when you came back? Like, was that well, like that? everybody. You know, Congratulated, you know. Glad to see you that you made it. But, but we knew we had something else to do after the war too in Europe. Because we got redeployed to Japan for occupation duty. So then when you yeah, when you got deployed to Japan, it was after we bombed uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Did you have because of Pearl Harbor when you went to Japan? Did you kind of have deep emotions within you? Uh, a little bit of animosity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is probably, was it hard for you to do your job and keep time? No, because we were, uh, we were in occupation to the, we are in a small town, village outside of uh, Osaka, which is called, you know, which is part of Tokyo, actually, in Yokohama. And, uh, we were glad we were on occupation duty there. 
after the, the war, if President Truman hadn't dropped the bomb, we were going to be the first uh, division to hit the shores from invasion. In 97, they had it figured at about 60% casualties the first day. We had a fate. So what kind of duties did you do in the Iraq? Kind of it was mostly, uh, mostly guard and ammunition dumps separate left over, and, uh, you know, strategic locations in that, you know, in case of a, figured out if there was going to be an uprising or something, we had that, that covered. So was it harder to fight in, uh, in Europe? Or? Japan, more accident, but well, you probably saw a lot of things you didn't want to see in your memory. There were two different things to begin with. In Europe, you know, you were fighting face to face with an enemy that was probably the best trained army in the world. And uh, in Japan, it was, uh, it was good duty. Got to see a lot. I got to see Nagasaki and Hiroshima a month after it was bombed. And uh, I don't know which was worse looking at that or the prisoner of war camps in Europe. And uh, when you stop, or you read about uh, and uh, killing off. Probably heard of the, the death of them. The Holocaust? The Holocaust, yeah. I saw that first hand and I saw about four of them. So you've seen the worst of the worst. Yeah. You've seen the Holocaust. Uh, that is, uh, now you hear a lot about that. A lot of people say that never happened. It did happen because I saw it. That must get you so mad when people say that. They say, oh, oh, oh man. <laughs> What are they thinking, you know? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I don't think anything ever happened like that before, and hopefully it'll never happen again. How did you um, feel about the war news in the media? Did you think it was the truth, how they perceived it, or do you think it was more propaganda? Well, that's a tough question, but it's a very good question. Uh, I think they reported it fairly, fairly well. Uh, if you were, uh, well, generally, it was uh, the town where you come from and your family and that, they followed you around a bit more, you know, more than anything. They, they found out everything they could about where you were. And uh, we got a lot of reviews because uh, I'll interject this right now. We fired the last shot in Europe in 97 bit. Uh, that was the chief of Czechoslovakia. Yeah, so, uh, we got a memorial down in Fort Bragg for that. Uh, it's got an M1 rifle on a pedestal on the ground. Oh, last shot memorial. After the war, what what kind of things did you do? Did you I went to school? You went back to school. GI Bill. First, I went to California Polytechnic, which is one of the top engineering schools in the country. I went uh, business administration. But I was still in the Army because over there I re-enlisted regularly. And off-duty, a lot of us went to the school in uh, one of the schools in the area that was there at night. Then when I come back, when I got out of the Army, I went to uh, Eastman School of Music. The one right around here? The one in Rochester. Yeah. But I ended up 
I ended up being a quality control technician. <laughs> That's what I made my living. Yeah. What would you say are some of the biggest misconceptions of war? The biggest misconception. Uh, and a lot of them, uh, the glorification of uh, people killing one another. Yeah, like they show in movies. You know, make open. Basic, uh, basic instinct of a person doesn't want to do that. You know, if they like it and love it, there's something wrong yeah. up here. Yeah. <laughs> so it was hard for you to well, the toughest thing that ever happened to me, and it bothers, still bothers me to this day, was towards the end of the hostilities over there, just before we went into Czechoslovakia. you got to remember, over in Europe, farming isn't like it is here. Everybody lives in the village, and they farm the land around it. Uh, went into this here one small town and they're, uh, they're buildings, they come right up maybe that far from the road. And then they come in there and all of a sudden we're getting fire from one of the barns or whatever it was. And we went and we uh, a couple grenades in there and it was all quiet and then when we went up there to check it out I know it's, it's sort of hard to believe what we found I believe in the last days of the war they used anything and anybody they could the oldest person in there that we could figure out was 15 years old because at the end of the war they used other uh, Children right out of school. We were in the war for a long time. You know that. That still bothers me. I had a shoot. I had a shoot and kill for a 14, 15 year old kid. But what choice did you have? They were shooting at you. If you could have had one luxury during wartime, what would it be? One luxury. <laughs> well, a good uh, Probably a good hot uh, meal. <laughs> Was the food bad? Because, because we ate out of uh, boxes oh, and boxes. cans. Yeah, food wasn't too good. <laughs> no. No. The only, the only thing that you hope you didn't get in the line was the beans and wieners in the oh. can. <laughs> 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 um, when you when you got when you went back to school after the war, you know, did, did you pretty much devote your life to preventing war? Or how did you feel at um, war after you had went there? And when our country well, was in trouble, what would you think about it? Hopefully, you didn't want any more of it. Yeah. But uh, I think to me, like war, it almost makes you believe that war is part of life. The way it's been going, I mean, we've got to remember there was Korea, Vietnam, the Desert Storm, all I mean, like it's one thing right after another. To, to me, that's not right. After the Army, were you um, asked to come back and train the new Army members? No. I didn't, I was going to stay, but they took, uh, they were taking away our rank making those warrant officers. You weren't an enlisted man then. You weren't a commissioned officer. But you had all officers privileged. Because I was a personnel sergeant major. Temporarily. So I sat down and figured it out. I'd had to take a cut and pay to become a warrant officer. So I said, well, no, no. <laughs> If you could give advice to our generation now and all the generations after you about war, what would you tell us? Well, 
I think war is inevitable, according to human nature. And what I tell is because we go in, uh, sorry, you sing and I, we go into schools, especially over the middle school, on Americanism projects. And uh, then if we tell them, and basically what I like to tell you people, if you're, if you're going into the service, after going into the service, and going to school, get into ROTC and get a commission. Because uh, that's really, you know, that's really the only uh, way you, and you get, a, you get your college paid for it, practically. So uh, you got to go into service, try as hard as you can to get a commission. Yeah. So they paid for because, most of your school? Yeah. Because uh, it's a lot better life. Did you want to show us some stuff you brought with you? Yeah. This here is a short version of the 97th Infantry. This is the, this here explains the overall what you're doing. division, you know. It's got right from the beginning. Been to Japan. It even has a map in here. This is all you did? This is. Pardon? This is all. This is just this right spot. What you did and stuff in Europe. Yeah, you know, that's what the division did. See, we got the map, and and it's a short history of the 97th Infantry. If you want to look at it, I'll pass it around. That's an old. That's old. And, and this one here is a, a very good friend of mine, and I we compiled this of our company. Jump me out, 386 Infantry. That's that one right there. That's a trident. That was uh, Neptune's pitchfork. Going on. This is, we all got the combat infantry badge, and there's our, our ribbons. We even got more added on to that afterwards. What was it called? The Neptune? Pardon? The Neptune what? Neptune's pitchfork. For, wasn't that the something to D-Day? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that something to do with D-Day? Yeah, because we were originally, uh, I don't know why they took that badge. I mean, yeah. Because uh, actually that is uh, from the Revolutionary War, 386, it was a Green Mountain boy. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is a company. 148 men and officers. And then here we've got day by day what we did. All our reaction. And then uh, you can see, you can see when you look through up in the date what happened. Here's pictures. This is, uh, these are all taken hours, maybe minutes after a firefight and combat and that. The veterans put this together? Yeah, our uh, company L Association. We have a uh, we have a reunion every year, different parts of the United States. And then in here, we even got it down to there was our itinerary in Europe. This is where we jumped off and do some of our across the Rhine. You heard about the Rhine crossings, I believe. Look at, look at it on TV, nowadays, mm -hmm. you know, we have TV cameras so, filming it. This here is probably, 
This is one of my favorite things right here. So if you want to take a look. If you could share, uh, just share some of your experiences as more, just so to, to show uh, future generations what it was really like a long time ago. Like in Europe, what were, what were some of the worst things that happened? Worst things? Yeah. Well, I think I, that one I didn't tell you about, teenagers. <laughs> uh, see, the, the outfits, we very seldom ran into the Wehrmacht, which was, you know, the regular army. Uh, you know, they were conscripts, too. That's like, uh, you know, that, uh, the toughest ones, like I said, the Stato stormtroopers and that. They didn't take prisoners, we didn't take prisoners. Because it's... But then, it's you working. And it wasn't, you know, like, from here across the street or something, it might be the fires from here to that TV set. Oh, really? They're close? <laughs> and twice we got into hand-to-hand. -hand. Person to person. Did you ever um, come face to face with a Nazi soldier when you said you saw the actual camp? Yeah, I got, got in hand to hand with it. With an actual Nazi soldier? Actually. When you saw those camps, you probably saw quite a hatred. Yeah, well, uh, I, think, I think maybe two thirds of the troops in my company bombed it. Yeah. Wow. That's how bad it was. Were there people there when you saw it, or did you see it after they were like liberated? Well, we were liberated. Yeah. Yeah. You know that there was a, that probably was my worst experience. All the death camps. Yeah. What 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 kind of stuff did you guys do there? Did you did you have to clean up and like? Did you have to help? Well, we didn't do the acts of cleanup. We went into the towns and had the German population do it so yeah. they could see what their yeah. people oh, did. Wow. So, how did you guys walk there? Yeah. You arrived? Pretty much was everything. Were they all gone by then? Were all the Nazis? Yeah. The, a lot of those, they tried to assimilate themselves into the population. Oh, yeah. They were just they were. And, uh, you know, and then if you found out it was nice. Yeah, because they knew what was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> that probably ain't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are, um, so then after that you were deployed into Japan and, uh, uh, when you were in Japan, did you, did you have to, like, clean up after, what, the bomb? <laughs> Japan, looking at Hiroshima and Nagasaki, I kind of, I got to say awesome, awesome and be, yeah, that, that might not be the right word for it, it's, uh, utterly, completely destruction. Uh, tell you about the atomic bomb, I saw one thing where one person, maybe it was more, it was just like the body was embedded right into a right into a cement road, you know. It just, oh, yes. it just like it transformed it right into a pitcher in the word. But the only thing and no one has really explained it. Chimneys did not disintegrate. Oh really? Everything was completely level with all the chimneys. And that would be ground zero. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's weird. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. We, we used to talk about that and scratch our head why the chimney yeah. didn't go down. Did you yeah. ever figure it out? No, never. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I wasn't an engineer. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I assume you weren't fighting like every minute of every day. Was there entertainment or anything that you guys did for fun when you weren't fighting? Yeah, we didn't. Uh, we more or less may know. What we did, we scrounged the countryside or 
for Southway chickens and went through cellars and that looking for hands. Oh, really? <laughs> <Like that. laughs> That's funny. Uh, they said when the 97s went through an area there wasn't any chickens left. <laughs> So where would you go to the towns and people? Yeah, and there it's, uh, most of the towns were rubble. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, were there a lot of people in when you were in Japan? Were there a lot of people there? A lot of civilians? Uh, Japanese civilians around where you guys were? Yeah. Where we were, we had a, a little town we were in in Japan. There was a big optical factory. Did you, interact, equipment and that. did you interact with them? Did you like talk to them? No, not while I was there. We really didn't. We were told not to. Yeah, oh, did, okay. I was, yeah, I was just going to ask you, were they, uh, did they have, did they have like a hatred for you? Did they not like us? Did they have the American soldiers doing what they did? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'd say we would wave to them or, yeah. you know, or something like that. Okay. It took a couple months, you know. To, and, the army let up by the old a little bit for privatization. Would you, uh, do you think it was a good idea to, well, not, I'm sure you don't think it was a good idea, but would, do you think the atomic bomb was the answer to, uh, yes. to ending the war? Yeah. Because we, we learned about that a lot in school. We always are asked, like, what would, what do we think? Do you think it should have been dropped or not? And we never have answers. We always just give our opinion, you know what I mean? Some people say, no, we should have, and some people say we should have. What do you think? Uh, it had to be done. Yeah. That's my, this is my own personal. Well, you yeah, you were wanting yeah, to hear it. It was only story. because uh, the attrition rate of invading Japan was sort of hard to believe. Now, when you're saying 60% casualties for a unit, that's a lot of lies. And uh, actually, President Truman probably saved my life by dropping. Yeah. Well, the life of a lot of my comrades and a lot of the service of people. Do you think it would have taken more than one million soldiers to uh, make the Japanese surrender if we have enough If we'd have had to invade, you'd have been fighting everybody in Japan. Yeah, including yourself? You would have been? You'd have men, women, children, and everything. You would have fight right down to the last person. How, how old were you when Pearl Harbor, when the attack on Pearl Harbor? Pearl Harbor, I think it was. You were still 15. In, so you were still in high school? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did that give you, like, maybe, I, I don't know, but did that give you, like, motivation to, when you were in Japan? Like, like, did that kind of like a revenge, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, that's. Like, do soldiers have that kind of mentality when they're in war? Like, all oh, the, the Japanese, they dropped the, you know, they attacked real hard, but they couldn't know the Americans. Yeah, you are. You didn't feel too good about them. Yeah, that. yeah, exactly. So, did it make war a little easier? Because of that, that's why I had to go into the service. Exactly, yeah, because that's why the war started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when, uh, when you were in high school and you got drafted, did you. Did you have plans on going to Japan? Did you know about that at all? Did, did I had plans of going into the military. Yeah. But uh, when I went in, they needed bodies <laughs> instead of specialists. Yeah. And that, uh, I wanted to go into the Air Force with the pilot training, but no, we need that for training. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, if you could uh, sum up the war in like one sentence, do you think you could do it? Do you think you could sum it up in one sentence? I think I could do it again? No, do you think you could sum up the war in one sentence? Like, how could you describe it? <sighs> Describe it, you know, before the war, we were an isolation country, you know, 
We had everything. We had the best of everything in the world. Uh, didn't want to get into it. It was, uh, it was a lot hard to, hard to explain, but when you're attacked, then you're going to fight back. You know, you're just not going to let it, oh, well, they've done their thing, you know, let's forget about it. Let's do it, uh, and, uh, Yamamoto, you probably heard of him. Who? Yamamoto, he was head of the Japanese military. When they attacked Pearl Harbor, he said we're going to lose because what we're doing, we're awakening a sleeping giant. Mm -hmm. so, you know, we could out, yeah. we could outproduce the world, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you think the U.S. should have joined World War II earlier, before Pearl Harbor? You think that really pushed us in? Do you think we? Would? I don't think it would have made that much of a difference no. in the final outcome. Europe might have been lost. Because uh, if Hitler hadn't made, uh, if he'd have let his generals win the war, it would have lasted a lot, lot longer. But he goofed up by opening up the Russian front. Yeah, two sides. Yeah. yeah. Um. Um, with prisoners of war, did you did you see a lot of prisoners of war? Did the yeah, Americans we took uh, or the down Czechoslovakia in the war. We were we were taken prisoners by the thousands. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when some uh, my squad back then, I was a squad leader, went out on patrol and ran into a big stream of uh, German prisoners. And six of us accepted the surrender of about 2,000 prisoners. <laughs> and they take them to march them back to the to the place that was set aside for prisoners of war. Well, what would you guys, what would you guys do with them? You had to treat them humanely and everything, right? Well, we, used to, we took them to the rear, and what they had, they had barbed wire corrals set up. Yeah. And they put them in there. Uh -huh. And they just stayed there? And they just stayed there until they were processed. We didn't have nothing to do with the processing of them. Yeah. yeah. We just brought them in by the droves. <laughs> Dropped them off. <laughs> like bringing in a herd of cattle. <laughs> did any of your um, friends come out of the war with you, or did they all pass away during the war? Yeah, well, my best friend, let's see, there was two of us from the Buffalo area. Here, he got killed the first day, my good friend, when we crossed the Sea River. Our company was a little lucky. We didn't have the attrition rate like maybe the we were company L, maybe company M. And the rest of them, in our battalion, they had a higher attrition rate for some reason. I don't know if we were better than the other companies or what. Yeah. He, your friend died on first day in Europe. You said. Mm -hmm. uh, in Europe. Were you when you? Uh, did you find out right away that he did? Were you like, oh, Yeah, he yeah. was about maybe as far away from here to that door over there where the exit sign is. Yeah. Were you ready to leave that or were you, like, did that, like, bring yourself seem down right away or did you still want to? Yeah, we kept going, you know. Yeah. You just put stuff like that out of your mind. Yeah, just so you can keep it. You know, if you dwelled on it and that, you you couldn't do your job. Right? Yeah. You see, every every person in the country has a specific job to do in order for it to operate efficiently. 
or as efficiently as it could. Uh, what kind of jobs did you do? What was, like, what was a daily, what was your average day? When you weren't fighting? You mean in combat? Yeah, in combat. Well, if you weren't fighting, you were cleaning your your equipment and your arms, your side arms. Make sure your equipment and your arms and that were in good shape because uh, that thing had to be clean and spotless or did not very efficient. Mm -hmm. What would you guys, where would you sleep at night? Wherever you could. Would it be in tents or? No, not in combat. Actually in combat, after a while you learned to walk and sleep at the same time. Yeah. Believe it or not, it can be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, it's not a real sound sleep, yeah, but, at least but, rest. but you're walking, you know, you know, it wasn't marching, you know, it was just a regular walk in your combat, but you could, uh, you could actually get rest yeah. while you were walking. Yeah. How did you get to Europe? On boat? Yeah. How was that? How long did that take? Uh, it took a little bit longer because we got, uh, they sent us over on what they call the victory ships. The one that Kaiser made, you know, they were turning out maybe a ship every week or every month. And some of the hulls were made of cement, believe it or not. Oh, wow. <laughs> <Cement>. <laughs> wow, I'm getting on a butt of cement Yeah, he's trying to make it Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, did, you, um, did you fly any planes? Because you said you wanted to. Did you get to fly no. any? No. The only time I got into a plane was right after the war they brought us back to France into a camp and about a dozen of us got a plane ride into London. Yeah. You know, per day. Yeah. And come back. We weren't supposed to do that, but we did it. <laughs> you know human you nature, you know, you know you try to get away with whatever you can get away with. <laughs> did you get a plane to Japan? What? Did you, did you yeah, get flown to Japan? No. Did you get a, go another no, boat? No, it, it took us across the uh, country on a troop train. Oh, wow. And the media was pretty heavy on it because we were being redeployed yeah. from one combat region to another combat region. Yeah. There's only one or two uh, divisions served in both theaters. Operation uh, 97 was one of them. Did you want to leave Europe and go to Japan? No, because we'll come back. We'll come back from Europe. <coughs> we come back from Europe. They didn't let us go home for 30 days. Oh. And then we came back, we had a report back to Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Yeah. And from there they sent us to Seattle. And from there they put us on a rig troop transport. It used to be a, you know, a cruise ship I, back then. I didn't know the name, USS Popers. Navy fair, yeah. food, you know. We 
there's some beans? <laughs> no, no, no beans. No. <laughs> In a can. <laughs> The K rations were a little bit different. They were in a box, simple and take them like that. They were in a box. It had a little bit of everything in it. Even had three cigarettes and a stick of chewing gum, crackers, a chocolate candy bar. What other things were you guys issued? When you got into like into Japan, you guys were all on your own. Did you have did you have a gun and what else did you Oh have? yeah, we should have been around. That's all yeah, did you just carry everything everywhere you went? No, all we did we used to go with what they call a light pack. Yeah. Just your arms and a and a, a basic backpack, you know, with your canteen and your rations and that in. And after we were there, we set up our own kitchens and barracks and that. Where would you get more supplies if you started walking through? Yeah. Where, pardon? Where would you get more supplies if you ran out? Well, they were delivered to us oh, by way ordinance. Yeah. In Japan. Yeah. If uh, you were lucky in Europe in combat if you got you got any? Yeah. You got anything? You had a scrounge for it because we had the Germans capture a lot of our food trucks that come up before it got to us. And you got to remember, two uh, infantry didn't fare too well on the supplies except the stuff you know that. You ordinarily didn't get like, uh, say for instance, cigarettes. Well, it come over from the United States, and I'd say it got into the port of Lahar. Whoever unloaded it got the top brand of cigarettes. Yeah. Then when it went to the regiment, they got the next top brand. And when it got to us up yeah. on the front line, we were smoking sunshines and wings cigarettes. <laughs> we were always on the bottom yeah. of the totem pole. And you had to do the worst stuff when you got the worst. Yeah, equipment. we got the. We got what was left over after the glamour outfits got it. So that's why you would probably go through, go through all the basements, like you said. Yeah, we got it. Scrambled yeah, off the countryside. Yeah. <laughs> so you just walked yeah. through the towns and pretty much took whatever you could, yeah. <laughs> you could get. Yeah. Is that how you survived? Is that? Yeah, we eat pretty good. I think maybe we might have eaten better than a lot of the hierarchy that was. Oh yeah, because yeah, the you were saying earlier. <laughs> Where it was, where we ate the best was in the Black Forest, yeah. in Germany. What was that all about? Black Forest. The Black Forest, that was, that was probably, when we were in there, that was probably was our toughest firefights. Mm -hmm. was in there because Germans had what they called the 88 artillery. Uh, they had Every port of Germany was zeroed in. I had everything in a thing with all the quadrants and fire. On the first shot, the German 88, they could fire a shot and hit that one foot. That was in Germany? Yeah. yeah. That was probably, that was probably the, the best artillery piece in the world. Most accurate. The Germans had it? So it was against you guys? Yeah, they had us out for a while. They had us out gun and the tanks were a lot better than ours, too, if we had them. They had the German Tigers. So how did you guys get by that? Then? How did you? Oh, well, we got a little. You got to remember, too, that uh, they ran out of supplies. Yeah. Gas. Spare parts in that for their tanks, 
towards the end of the war, that's what they relied on, was their Panzer Corps. Panzer is a word for tank. They were, they were good. Boy, they were good. Were you ever wounded to where you couldn't fight for a few days, or no? Well, I got right here. I got a skin grab. And down here, I had a skin grab. That didn't take. This was uh, they done the grafting after I was out of the service for about a year. Because they come up with a new law uh, thing in the medical community of taking skin from one part and oh, yeah. on the other. Here it took. Down here it didn't. Where did you receive those? I received that in Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Yeah. How, how did you get those? Was it hand-to-hand -hand combat? Or? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I was... Yeah. What do I run to a machine gun? That's now trying to outrun a machine gun. You don't want to outrun it. <laughs> 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 Who were you fighting? <laughs> It was a uh, bad band. It was a German war match. Yeah. That was the regular army. Yeah. yeah, were you always just fighting the Germans? Is that pretty much what yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Well, I I was in an Africa or yeah. Italy. Yeah. That's that's incredible. So then when you guys you said they had all those the uh, tanks and everything and they ran out of gas and everything. So then how did you eventually take over well, they just surrendered. They just surrendered? Yeah. Just because they didn't have supplies? Is that the only reason? Well, I don't know. I guess they really surrendered with self-preservation more than anything to hold on to what they had yeah, left in life and that. You know, so, you know, there's a point when you're under duress like they were. Yeah. Uh, you got to give up someplace along the line. <laughs> you know, when it's not doing you any good. How did you guys get supplies then from, from the U.S.? Where did you guys get, did you get it from the U.S. or Britain? Or where did we get supplies from? Yeah, so. It was, uh, that was ordinance's job and quartermaster's job to get the supplies up to us. And what would they do? Where would they come from? Uh, they'd come from the uh, ports in France. Yeah. And they put them on, uh, you probably heard about the Red Ball Express. No. Could you explain that? Uh, so it's sort of isn't a well-known one. There is a movie on it called Red Ball Express. What are thousands of trucks? They bring supplies? They bring supplies up. Yeah. And what they did, they just kept going and going and following them. And they're, uh, you know, a convoy would probably be five or ten miles long trucks with supplies, you know, trying to keep up with the outfits as they moved along and resupply ammunition and gas was a big thing. We have about uh, five minutes. I believe, oh. I believe you look on your computer and that you might bring up what the Red Ball Express is. Yeah. Okay. And I brought it up on mine. <laughs> so what was, what would you think of? Uh, Germany's biggest mistake was opening the Russian front. Opening the Russian front. So then they split the army. Well, it, it stretched out their uh, military. Yeah. Did Did you guys hear of that news when uh, when it happened? Yeah. All right. You know, maybe I shouldn't say this, but oh, say <laughs> say everything you want. Yeah, to Pat. You know, Pat and. Uh, you made one statement and I agreed with him. When it was all over with, he wanted to keep right on going through Russia and take them out. Who's Patton? General Patton. He was head of the armored. He was the most, most famous general in the U.S.? In uh, Europe, yeah. Okay. And what, what did he say? What was his? He said uh, he wanted to keep right on going. Keep going past Germany? No, taking Russia out. The U.S. <laughs> yeah. He said. Uh, he said someday down the line there's going to be a hostility to them. Yeah. With the cold he knew what they were. Um, yeah. 
So what did what did you guys feel about that? <laughs> you agree we with didn't that? want to do it. No. <laughs> well, yeah, of course we Because we saw what happened to them at Stalingrad. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, but most uh, what a lot of people don't realize a lot of the fighting material that the Russians had were made in the U.S. Yeah. All their planes, yeah. tanks. All come from uh, here. Matter of fact, the airplanes that they had were made in Buffalo. Yeah. At Bell Aircraft, the Air Cobra yeah. fighter yeah. plane. Yeah. Um, should I ask about, well, how do you feel about the current war right now? Do you have any feelings on that to finish up? I don't know. To be honest with you, I'm not a Bush fan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, I have my own politics too, what yeah. I believe in. Uh, it probably, uh, probably something that was ordained or had to happen or yeah. probably had to be done because uh, maybe we wouldn't hit that weapons of mass destruction and yeah. about before, you know, really got out of hand. The only thing I can that in oil was uh, being concerned. Yeah. Our economy is, you would be surprised how much our economy is based on oil. Yeah, I know. So you don't know if it's really for oil or for, you can't, no yeah. one really knows. No one really knows. Yeah. We only hear what they want us to hear. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Any questions? Do you guys have any? Other than what you were mandated. <laughs> I think I think the most interesting thing you said was about the uh, uh, about how General Grant wanted to keep going. Yeah. That was that had me incredible for you to hear that. Uh, like how good was the communication between the generals and like the president and what the president wanted and his goals and America's goals? And, like did you guys pretty, pretty much? Good. Pretty much do your own thing out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not like today where you just you get yeah, well, no. What you uh, see, every situation is not the same. You know, and adapt to a situation you're running into. Yeah. You know, maybe sometimes you had a wing. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. I thought. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting. And how you guys did hand on hand, like you actually like punched each other, like you were that close to the enemy. Like I didn't oh. know that you were ever that close. I thought it was just guns. Yeah, it was, it was hand to hand. Uh, you know, like uh, just one little instance. I don't talk too much around but I had to learn the village. And, come to the streets like that and there was a building here. I was coming up this way. Gotta remember I was only nineteen too. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's coming up this way and the German soldier was coming this way. He wasn't any older than I was. And there we were, face to face. But I walked away. I probably were a little quicker. <laughs> <I'm> still here. <laughs> yeah. And another thing that was a little bit uh, <laughs> laughed about it because you know us first gunners in the mortar section they had a plus a regular firearm we had to carry the mortar too. We got caught out in the open by uh, 88 fire and what they were doing. It was a shell wasn't landing on the ground before it exploded. It was time so it exploded waist high. So it got the maximum effect on anything. When that opened up, I took off, believe it or not, with a 60 pound mortar on my shoulder and my firearm, I went by everybody. <laughs> because in school, we used to, we train, we used to run a lot. We could, my friends and I, we could run 10 miles a day, 15 miles a day.
trial. Yeah. I'm not sure. That was, that was my uh, <laughs> best athletic thing. I mean, I could run for hours. So you have a lot of memories from war, huh? Do you think about them all? Yeah, I have a lot of memories.